government in Russia and Eastern Europe for most of the 20th century. A key feature of communism is that the economy is centrally planned and controlled by the government. Moldova is one of the countries that made the break in 1990 and moved its economy from a command economy to a mixed economy. With me is Moldova's ambassador to London, Yulian Fantasu. So this is a good example of a transition economy where the economy has moved from a command economy during the, the Soviet Union to a more mixed economy. Can you tell me how this worked? The economy was a planned economy by five years. Oh, they, had, uh, they, they, they used to have five uh, years uh, plans approved by the government and um, you know to have so much delivered you know output this and that and that but but in real terms it was highly inefficient the Soviet uh, legacy obviously is something that unites I'd say all 15 former USSR countries um, the difficulty though is that um, people have forgotten, I think, to some extent, the work ethic and um, they are not that entrepreneurial um, as they used to be. The Soviet system has uh, used um, a lot of terror basically to wipe out all the private initiative because they needed to control people's lives. So they've changed the whole thing. Um, uh, they've killed the initiative, the private initiative, <laughs> and, and forced people uh, to work in collective forms and in factories. Um, and uh, they've done it by sending people to camps, labor camps, to Siberia. So was this one of the main problems in this transition phase, the, the work ethic and regaining that competitiveness? Yes, economically speaking, uh, but it's not just that. I mean, it's not a simple thing, you know, uh, competitiveness. People have to change their mind. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, a mentality thing, uh, and I think it's generational as well. I was more, uh, I think, ambitious at the beginning of 90s when I thought that it's going to take just maybe a couple of years, several years, and things will work as they used to. But but now I understand after 20 something years that you just have to <laughs> to work harder for it and, and wait until, you know, just new people, younger people come and, 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 and take responsibility for, for, for economy and society and, you know, new polit political class, yeah. new entrepreneurs, you yeah. know, move things forward. So inflation was a big problem during the 90s. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yes, um, uh, inflation was a problem because, um, uh, because um, of the transition itself. Obviously, we have inflation in other countries um, uh, that are very painful uh, and, and have an impact on, on people's lives. But, but um, indeed, when, when a country breaks up and, and um, currency devaluates uh, a, a lot, and um, and uh, new countries emerge, and, uh, and sometimes they adopt different policies. Uh, I remember we had um, sort of coupons that were transitional uh, way from uh, uh, Soviet rubles to national currency, Moldovan Leo, which took time. And, uh, and uh, during this period of time, obviously, inflation basically um, undermine all the savings that people had accumulated during Soviet times. And it was a, a, a very serious blow to elder generation who tried to save money for retirement. And, and overnight, they basically lost so many years of, of hard work, you know, and, and I can't even describe, you know, personal, you know, dramas of so many people and I feel sorry for them, but that was the history. I mean, I, I, I couldn't change myself, so this is how it went. So what were some of the government measures to reduce inflation? The knowledge and experience we have now uh, perhaps would have helped then. Uh, but at a time when, when political elites are basically you know, new and, 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 and they don't know much about the economy, and economic policies, it's very difficult to expect that anyone can tackle it properly. Yes, when, when you're smart, when you're older, wiser, 
you think uh, I should have done this or that. The government tried to ease the pain of pensioners by indexing the pension itself. I know if I'm, I'm saying it right, but basically by adjusting the, the pension to the rate of inflation, you know. We've tried to do this to, to some extent. We've tried also to uh, repay the, the, the savings that people had in the bank to uh, a particular ratio, which, which a little bit alleviated the pain from losing the savings in, in banks on Soviet Union collapsed. So because people saved a lot of money, you know, and uh, overnight they lost it. So the, the new government, Moldovan government, when, when they came to be <laughs> as an independent country, tried somehow to, to pay back. But it was a different country already, so we, we didn't have, the government didn't have enough resources to basically pay everything in full. Can you tell me a bit about Moldova's trading relationship with the EU? Well, it's growing, um, and um, I reckon uh, it's, uh, it's more than 50% that we, we trade with uh, EU member states these days. In a year or so I think we'll have an association agreement and the core part of the association agreement is so-called deep comprehensive free trade which will mean free trade <laughs> which this stands for for um, between you know Moldova and and uh, EU. And how important is that free trade to Moldova? Well it, it, it is important from uh, from um, from at least two uh, perspectives. First, um, uh, our companies earn more money. Uh, they establish partnerships with, uh, with people, with companies uh, in, in Western Europe. But also, um, they learn how to, uh, to, to compete. And, um, and uh, we, I think our companies uh, over the over last years, um, through competition, They've, they've managed to earn money, but also they've managed to restructure their, 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 their industries. Uh, it's, it's difficult, indeed, uh, to restructure, but I think that's the only way, you know, to, 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 to be better <laughs> and, and to be more competitive. And I think Moldovan companies are very much keen, you know, to, to be good and, and be better <laughs> than anyone else. And I think trade is good, not just because you, you are capable of earning, but you are capable of doing things better. You know? So free trade is, is good for our economy. And looking at the current situation with the Eurozone and the, the crisis with the single currency, do you think Moldova has benefited from having its own currency? Well, I, I don't know. It's not that uh, anyone asked us in, in, in to join <laughs> the single currency. To some extent, it's true that uh, when, when a country has uh, its own currency, it, it has more tools to, 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 to get out of a crisis, all right? I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't question that. <laughs> you, you, can, you, can, you can be more flexible as a decision maker uh, when you have your own currency. You can depreciate, you can, you can, you can do certain things. <laughs> Uh, uh, while while uh, while in uh, in uh, in a single currency, obviously, the the the, the maneuvers you are kind of you know re restrained. Your 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 capacity to maneuver is, is rather limited. But I hope that in in, in a couple of years, uh, the crisis will be solved one way or another. So um, we will continue to trade. And Moldova is ranked as the poorest country in Europe. Why is that? Well, um, you know that the the question of poverty is rather debatable. What do you mean by by, by that? Um, I uh, believe that uh, that numbers are rather you know debatable uh, because the level of consumption is rather high. I believe that. The level of gray con gray economy is is, is kind of uh, unofficial economy uh, is is rather high and uh, and therefore therefore people are not that poor as it looks on on on, on paper. 
personally, and it's my personal opinion, I don't, I don't speak on behalf of my government, but I do have, have to have an explanation when I simply walk uh, uh, as an observer on, on streets and I see expensive cars, I see beautiful houses, I see people sitting in restaurants, and then I know how much money they have a sal as a salary, and then I wonder <laughs> how, where this comes from, you know, people buy goods. So, um, someone who, who, who uh, as an economist, should look very carefully, uh, be a much more careful observer of, of, of the whole system, of the whole society, how the society functions, not just what the, the statistics, the Department of Statistics uh, comes up with. Because uh, economy is a fascinating and much more deeper and more complex uh, thing.